Hi everyone, this is Greg here from Peercat and welcome to the Just a Meme podcast where we chat about teams using blockchain technologies to solve real world problems. Today we have Axel from Neefty where they're building an NFT rarity ranking service for eco-friendly chains. Good to have you here, Axel. Really excited to chat to you today. Yeah, thank you for having me here, Greg. Um, it's on, it's thank, thank you so much for, for having us here. We're, we're very excited to talk about Nifty and as well as connect with you guys. So really looking forward to, to this talk. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, it, yeah, it's always great to have um, people who have come across from different walks of life and different chains <laughs> as it is now. Um, so before we get into all of that and uh, what you're currently working on, how did you get into crypto? Like what was the sort of rabbit hole or the journey you went down and, uh, yeah, how, sort of where's that landed you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I got, I got into crypto back in at the end of 2016 is when I first discovered crypto. Um, and immediately, Im immediately it resonated with me. Um, the idea of programmable money, it sounded really interesting to me. Um, the idea of having a decentralized currency really resonated with me as well. Um, and, and yeah, it, at first, initially I got into Bitcoin, which was the first one that you usually learn about, um, then quickly got into Ethereum as well and got really excited about the ability to be able to program and add real smart contract functionality. That was also pretty interesting. And eventually I got into XRP, um, and that when I got into XRP, it re resonated with me the most because I was able to see how it was solving a, a real world problem and they were going, I, I enjoy, I, I liked the fact that it was more, more tangential what they were going after. And it was, it was something that I, I, I really liked that they were solving and, and that I had experience with as well, with transferring money to different countries and how, how hard it used to be. Um, so that, that, that definitely resonated with me the most. Um, yeah. And, and, and then ever since then, it's just been a rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole until eventually we got into NFTs. Um, and when I got into NFTs, um, the very first, the very first time that, that I minted an NFT, um, it was super, it was super fun. Um, I spent over a, more than 24 hours. I think it was like 32 hours. I was awake trying to I mean. get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was that yeah, I spent like 32 hours, um, awake trying to mint this one NFT that, that they, you didn't know when they were going to enable the mint button yet, yet there was a window that you knew they were going to enable it. So <laughs> that is horrible that they did that, but it was also pretty fun. Um, the discord was pretty active. So a, a, a lot of people from around the world were, were having fun and it was a pretty fun experience overall. Um, now when I, when that mint happened and that was my first ever NFT that I minted, um, initially after that mint, um, everyone started talking about rarities and everyone started posting like different, sh different, different spreadsheets and different yeah. links to different sites. And I'm like, okay, what is going on here? It's not just the NFT, but there's more to this than just having an NFT. Um, so that was the part I became obsessed with. I became obsessed with figuring out how all these, all, all these rarities work and how all, all, all these different systems work because yeah. as, as you probably, you guys probably know, there are different ways of ranking stuff and sometimes it has big impacts on the way stuff ranks. So yeah, yeah. but, but we can definitely talk more about that later on, but yeah, that's my story. So rabbit hole after rabbit hole and yeah, keep loving every single bit of it. Yeah. So did you find out about, uh, X, uh, through XRP, did you find out about the Flare community or did you sort of come across Flare by itself? I think most people's journey was XRP to Flare because it's sort of like interconnected a bit, um, especially when they announced the F, uh, F assets and stuff like that. I mean, and that's sort of what led you down. Why did you decide to, I guess, build on Flare first? Was it because there was sort of an NFT, a native NFT, a way to do NFT straight away rather than waiting for X? LS20 and stuff like that. Right, right. So yes, I, I did learn about Flare through XRP. So I, after receiving the airdrop, I started looking more into what Songbird was, Flare, and what Flare was. And the more I read, the more I liked what they, what was going on on Song mm. and Flare as well. Um, and and yeah, there there's definitely a lot of really good development happening over there. And 
Yeah. So, so at, at first we, we were already building Nisty at the time. So okay. we, we were, we were already starting. We, we already had some, uh, I already had something that was a bit rough around the edges, but it, it was, uh, um, it, I was using it personally for ranking collections on my own. Uh, and then when I started getting into NFTs on Songbird, um, there, there was a real need for having a, a variety ranking service because most projects, what they were doing is they had their own rankings on different websites yeah. and they, or they were sharing different sp spreadsheets. So, um, I'm like, okay, you know, I, er, we, we have, we, we have this opportunity to launch Nixky on Sunbird, um, and let, let's just launch it. And it, we, we were immediately very well received with the community, the community loved us and it, yeah, it's been just an up, uh, going uphill from there and, and yeah, it's been great working on Songbird and Flare and that community is pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting that you sort of, uh, yeah, you sort of went there first in a way, cause I would have thought it's sort of like a smaller community, um, but like perfect place to sort of try stuff out and, um showcase stuff uh maybe that well it seems to have worked out for you because you got a really nice looking site um with lots of interesting data on here um and you're purely focusing on so like i'm just looking at grumpy monkeys for instance um right like you've got yeah you've got the obviously image of it and then you have six or so traits uh for each one and i guess they come up in different uh percentages proportions in each one and that's how you determine the rarity in a way. So, right. So it, yeah, it depends. Yeah. It depends on the algorithm that's applied. Um, so there's a purely statistical way of call. I, I don't know how, how, how deep you guys want to go into how they, they, these are calculated, but, um, but yeah, the, there's different formulas that are applied and in, into how they are calcul calculated. Um, one of them, which is the statistical way of ranking things, it's purely mathematical or right. it's the independent probabilities of each attribute. So it's a combination of independent probabilities of each attribute. Um, and that gives you, w w that gives you the least probable. So it defines rarity as the least probable NFT with the set of combinations that gets the highest ranking on that system. Yeah. That makes um, sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there are others with like such as rarity score and then there's strict normalization. So yeah, there's a big, there's a big space in there and different ways. And internally we have some other ones that we like, um, yeah. and, but, but we haven't, we haven't, we haven't made those public yet. Okay, cool. So yeah, there's definitely more, it sounds like it's quite an expansive thing and it's always going to be changing how they're doing it so you're always going to have your work cut out keeping up <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah but and, and and yeah it's it really it's to us it's interesting how how they affect the, the how, how they produce the results and and you know the sometimes the differences like i said are pretty big based on the rank mm. that you choose yeah and do you compare different do you like do side by side different rankings of which sort of algorithms you use and stuff like that. Yeah. So we have certain collections that aren't verified and for the ones, the collections that aren't verified, those collections, we display both rankings. So you can okay, compare nice. the statistical with the trait normalized rarity score. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's actually when we, when we started initially, when we started, we, we thought that we, we thought that users were going to find a lot of value in being able to explore the different ways that NFTs could be ranked. Uh, no, they, just, was, they just want one. They want to be told. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, it caused a lot of confusion amongst, amongst right. the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then also with collection owners. So, so yeah. Um, so now, so now for collections that are verified, um, they, they, they get the verified ranks. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And how many collections are you sort of tracking at the moment? Uh, three by um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12. So yep. 36 ish. Yep. 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 36 <laughs> is about right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. yeah and then about most of them are, oh, I see the blue tick is probably the verified ones then. Yep. Or the gray tick. I don't know. Blue tick. A bit like Twitter. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Because <laughs> some of them have loads of uh, uh, different uh, metadata across them, like loads of things that can be ranked on, doesn't it? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, how have you found like uh, dealing with all those sort of ones that come up where I, I know for us, um, the metadata has been at times tricky <laughs> uh, and we've had to take it one by one a lot of the time. Um, I don't know how you you guys have found that in a sort of songbird. Yes, um, definitely metadata is a really real big challenge that you're constantly having to update for yeah. and, account, and account for. Um, I am a big proponent of following the metadata standard for that is currently adopted by OpenSea and, and a lot of the major marketplaces. Um, yeah. You, that, that seems to be, uh, at least on Songbird, most collections seem to be following that. So nice. for us, yeah. a, lo a lot of it has been simple in that sense. Um, there, there have been some that don't follow it to the T, but, but overall they follow that, that attributes array, which is nice. Um, and it's what I recommend as well, because, um, there are a lot of open source engines that, that for generating NFTs that have adopted it as well. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's, it's our primary, it's, it's our, of when we ingest metadata, that's primarily the method that we convert it to. If yeah. it's not that method, we convert it to that method. Uh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause there's quite a lot of discussion in XRPL at the moment about metadata and stuff like that. And funnily enough, our, um. CTO was in Vegas at uh, the conference and he asked David Schwartz, oh, David, what do you think? <laughs> um, and he sort of said, well, you know, we could do it in our own standard, but you know, it's probably more likely that it's going to be open C. Obviously you're going to have some that choose one and the other, and then you'll have these edge cases, but he thought that the majority of people will probably follow like the open C standard as the main one. And, um, we can, you know, XLS 24. Uh, for people in the Ripple crowd is out there and looking for feedback. So uh, definitely weighed in on that one if you're uh, in the in the, uh, in the the ecosystem. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So speaking of XRP, so you you started on Songbird. You're now coming back to, uh, wait, sort of full circle almost back to XRP now that we almost have <laughs> uh, <laughs> native NFTs. There are some there already. How is that sort of, how have you approached it? How has that sort of been for you guys and sort of what you, what are you planning here? Yeah. So, so, so yeah, we, we, we plan, we're, we're planning to basically do the same thing that we're doing on Sunbird, um, on, on XR, on XRPL, um, as well as we, we, we have some other features that are coming down the pipes that we're still developing for. So, so yeah, we, we, we have a lot of cool things coming up. Um. And yeah, r right now at the moment, uh, we're mostly focused on being able to read the events from the, from the, from the XRPL and being able to extract all the mints that happen and then get all the metadata real time as, as stuff is happening. So, so yeah, there, we still, we're still developing for it. Um, and, and, and yeah, we, so we, we, we hope, we definitely hope to be ready for when XLS 20 comes out. Um, but if. If, if we don't have everything ready, we'll still be able to rank. So we, we still have ways that we can rank regardless of whether we have the whole automated process. Yeah. I mean, I think our view probably the same in your camp and a couple of other people's is that not everything's going to turn over on the first day. It can't physically <laughs> because of the right. demand on the system. You know, there'll be a few projects that jump straight into XS20 and uh, get their first sort of thing, but I think it will take. A, f a fair chunk of time, you know, maybe a few weeks, maybe a month or two, uh, for everyone to sort of come across and yeah. So we're sort of expecting there's a bit of a lag time where there's going to be almost two systems. It will the IOU world of the and XLS 14s, 19s and those guys, but then the XLS 20 will sort of take center stage after a couple of months, really. Um, right. so yeah, hopefully you have a bit of time. I mean, we have a bit more time now that they've found the bug, need to fix it, update everything. You know, I saw someone yeah. taking a poll the other day saying, will it be before December? Uh, <laughs> this goes a long way out. I mean, I'd hope that now everyone's paying attention. We could get it done sooner, but, um, if we have yeah. the validators. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think, I, I think I saw, I, they, they might've already pushed the amendment out. I think I saw an, an like certain scan that they, they had already pushed the amendment out, but it was still a 40, a 40% or 
That might be the old one. I, I'm not sure right now. Maybe they haven't pushed that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it, I, I'll have to check, but because <laughs> it didn't have the deprecate it yet, so I don't know. I don't. Yeah, know. I yeah. think they just um yeah go sort of above it, don't they? And then uh, sort of deprecate yeah. the old one, like you say, take that off the slate. Yeah. yeah, no, it should be a really exciting time. I think so many projects uh, have been waiting for this. Um, what's uh, sort of going back to Flare? Like, what's the you said like the developer communities there a lot. Um, there's quite a a a big one, I guess. Um, from what you're saying, or sort of smaller size, but it's, similar sort of vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's just it's, it's a smaller community, but but the community is small and everyone's super helpful. Um, so. It's a very embracing community, um, mm. and and yeah, it, it's it's it, it's really it, it's a community unlike any other I have seen. Where you know, it, it, typically when you join a a, a community, they, there tends to be a lot of tribalism, um, and a lot of you know, you know tribalism within that community. But uh, the the flirt community is different in that sense, and in, in, in which they're they're really embracing of all communities. Um, and I think it goes back to, to the motto of what they're really building over there, which is basically bridging everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so that, so that's on their ethos and we, 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 we resonate with that and we, we, we love that about the flare and somber communities. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I was, I was looking at a few of the projects. I don't know if the, uh, I think there was the 888 TNW, the new world or something that was going to launch, but I'm not sure if that was, I was watching that for a while seeing how it progressed and stuff like that um yeah it's a it, it's an ever-evolving thing and when i don't know how far they're i think they're in observation mode at the moment as as i understand <laughs> it um so I, is there going to be like any changes and stuff that you see coming that are going to sort of have to be a amendments in the similar style as ripple as the uh, ledger on xrpl or do you think it's just going to sort of flick over one day from songbird to flare and that'll be that <laughs> well the, the 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 fact that they have they already have songbird um mm. and songbird is technically flare yeah uh, it should, make some, should, should make that transition smoother um but obviously there there the, there will be i imagine there will be something that they will figure out on flare that weren't caught on some on songbird and it's just the natural way of things and development of software really yeah um but but yeah but there but but i think i think flair is definitely doing the right thing on taking their time making sure they pass all the audits yeah. and uh, I, I, yeah i think that's the right way of doing it versus trying to rush something out there and then find out uh, there's a huge bug or something yeah um, so sim similar to what xrp has also been doing with xls20 yeah yeah <laughs> making sure it works I mean, yeah. the, the ledger on XRPL has run for, you know, 10 years, pretty much uninterrupted. It's probably one of the few chains that can claim that, if not the only one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they're definitely doing something right and slow and steady sort of <laughs> will win it in the end. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know what else you sort of um, are planning. I, uh, did you get a grant from, were you part of wave three of the XRPL grants? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we were receiving some of the wave three. Yeah, and that XRPL was mainly now. to bring over the technology from Flare to XRPL and build out some of these new features that you talked about before. Um, Correct. Okay, and that's like over the next sort of six months or so, I guess. We'll yep. start seeing yep. that come so, out. So, so, yep, so a lot of the development we've been doing is, yeah, hitting our milestones and making sure that, yeah, we, we hit all the milestones that we talked about. And yeah. Yeah, ma ma making sure that, yeah. We're, so, so a lot of our development is towards those models. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. And yeah, hopefully XLS 20 co goes through. I know, I know you'll be on the dev net and, uh, sort of ready to rock, but, uh, it'll be a game changer when it actually goes live sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. looking, really looking forward to the uh, future. I don't know if there was, um, sort of any other projects or stuff that you found, you found interesting and is sort of worth checking out for the audience in the sort of similar space. Um, always like hearing what other people are watching in the space <laughs> uh, uh well we definitely we, we definitely had a, have a lot of um so so we we have a lot of exposure to to like the different nft projects and mm. the, yeah there, there's a lot of there's a lot of really 
good projects um, b building both on XRPL and Songbird. Um, so, so yeah, we're, we're definitely very excited about a lot of these projects that we've been working with, um, mm. and just working with the different teams, like they're, they're yeah, the, there's some teams that are just pretty amazing. Um, we're big fans of the X toads, um, and the S toads. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 I love, I love, I love Kingsman. Um, he's amazing. Um, he's, he's, he's been amazing to work with. Um, so yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of cool projects. Um. And there's, there's also, um, on, on Songbird specifically, there, there's a lot of real good, interesting artwork on the NFTs that we, that we, we see that we don't see on other chains, whereas other chains seem to be copying much of what's already been done. There's a lot yeah. of innovation being done on the art side and that, that really, that we, we really like that about Songbird as well. So for example, one, one of the projects that we personally like the artwork are the cosmic bombers, like the cosmic okay. pilots, yeah. the cosmic pilots have a, uh, have a really cool artwork that we really like. So, you know, there, there's some, but there's, a, there's something for everybody out there. Um, okay. but yeah, yeah, I'll check it out. Those are, yeah, those are, those are two projects we really like, but they, there, there's a lot more that I could talk about them all because, you yeah, know, we, everyone we've worked with has been amazing. Oh, nice. No, that sounds, that sounds cool. I'll definitely, uh, yeah. take a look at them and, uh, yeah. I, Hopefully see them in the, in the wild soon. Um, okay. I, I think that was it for me. Um, I really enjoyed chatting to you and finding out more about like songbird as well as your plans for XRPL. I think you've got a really cool site, um, which I'll link to below nif nifty.io for anyone who's listening and wants to go now. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate you coming on and, uh, giving us some of your time to <laughs> tell the community a bit more about yourselves and, uh, yeah, all the sort of exciting stuff you got planned. So really, thank you for coming on. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for having me here. No problem. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone who's still listening in. Uh, please give us a like, thumbs up, uh, comment, and uh, yeah, send us some feedback if you got ideas and or projects and stuff that we, we should look at. Uh, yeah, and tell your friends. And that's how, it, <laughs> how the world goes around. So uh, yeah, thanks again for coming on and uh, yeah, see you in the next one.